Hello, everybody, and welcome to our forum of Resolve the Unsolved by Panacea Evis Consulting Group. Uh, as the business and economy across the globe is slowly recovering post the pandemic scenario, uh, there have been talks all around which uh, not only people outside the group, but within the same group, me, Sanjeev, uh, Mr. Goel, I'm sure Rajiv, you must be also getting into financial requirements, new ventures, uh, restructuring of finances, a lot of financial talks along with business are quite live and is going on. Venture funding or venture capital is one core area which is attracting a huge amount of eyeballs among the young and emerging entrepreneurs today. We meet them on and off. They have been working on various tech projects, non-tech projects, exports, imports, which is there. So we thought it might be uh, useful. We have a very focused discussion around challenges of VC funding. And when we say challenges of VC funding, we will focus our discussion on two aspects. One, trying to understand the first part, why sometimes is it difficult to get a VC funding? Two, the second part of it, post VC funding, what could be the challenges? The two sides of it. So we'll keep the discussion very generic on that. And the first portion, as we discuss about it, let me introduce uh, the panel today. I have Mr. Sanjeev Banerjee with me. Hi, Sanjeev. Hi. Sanjeev com comes in over here with his rich experience of 25 years plus into finance and has been part of the corporate world for the last 22, 23 years, not only in the country, but outside, specifically in the Middle East of late. And today, he is actively involved in helping working on the restructuring of finances with various corporates in Northern India, entrepreneurs, and the MSB segments. So by and large, I find him heavily busy till night, 10 to 11 o'clock. That means that Sanjeev has a lot of business to do. That's my gut feel. Uh, we have Mr. Ravinder Goel. Mr. Goel, welcome to the panel. Hello, Mr. Mr. Goel is a well-known entrepreneur. And I always refer him as the eighth generation entrepreneur when he introduced about his entire family background and everything. It was exciting. He has a rich uh, entrepreneurial background of setting up a massive education and scaling operations pan India for the last 20 years plus, where he has helped a lot of youngsters gainfully gain skills get into the job and employment. At the same time, he has been interacting with various corporates across the country. Today, he isn't an entrepreneur. He, in fact, is mentoring, guiding, and also, I would say, investing into technology startups, engaging actively with them. Uh, that is where Mr. Goel is involved. Uh, so let's get going. The first point of discussion, Rajiv, you're most welcome to join in wherever you feel. Thank you. Thank you, Sandeep. Thank you. I will definitely. Please do. Uh, as the first part was the challenges of VC funding. So let's focus on why do people find it most of the time that it is not easy to get through a venture capitalist funding or attract the attention of a venture capitalist. While we hear so many stories, so many articles on newspapers, magazines, web, everywhere that so many billions, millions of funding is happening, which attracts not only the new generation, mid-career entrepreneurs also, and people starting off new businesses. A lot of focus uh, of the funds, which we keep on discussing and debating in and out, like today, 15 minutes back, also me and Mr. Poe were having a chat on uh, what could be a, a focus of a venture capitalist funding. 
So by and large, we all know that VC is backed by a limited partners from where the funds come. And VC is the front end face of those funds. Maybe it's a pension fund or a mutual fund or HNI. And VC is a professional group of people who is supposed to understand the market well, evaluate the opportunities well, and does the investment indirectly or directly on behalf of the limited partners, which is there. And they manage the operations. Technically, this is what I had to say. Taking on from here, I would invite Sanjeev uh, to share your bit about why do you feel sometimes, because you are a core finance person and you actually are on the other side of the table most of the time. So if I go to you, you will try to evaluate all my suggestions and propositions from a financial experts or a VC's point of view. So why do you think, what are the challenges which an entrepreneur faces initially to get an access to a VC or get their share of mind? Thank you, Sandeep. Now, uh, first and foremost thing that I just want to give one data to start with. This is from uh, ENY data from 2020, where it talks about that uh, in 2019, we were having around $48 billion of you know, um, VC fund or investment from outside India, FDI, so called. And they predicted that it will fall to 40% level around 19 to 20, 22 billion dollars uh, in next one to two years. Definitely one is the COVID. And secondly, uh, there has been uh, a major reservation on various, uh, I will say, the parameters on which the, uh, the investor looking at, which we have not provided in our statute. One is the, one of the basic thing that we have seen uh, is uh, what we call it the anti-dilutions. The protection, the investor is always looking at the anti-dilutions within the company, you know, right. and they should be taking care of because whenever the investor comes in, they are the minority shareholder. They are not the major shareholders. You know, the company laws act talks about that up to 25%, there is no voting, right? So the for business, always, the owners, or the founders always try to, you know, uh, put them within 25%. So anyway, they are, as an investor, they are always a minority shareholder. So right. their protection in terms of anti-dilution, liquidation, preferences, then your, um, uh, one of the major is the tighten use of the funds. Since you are an investor is a, uh, is a uh, minority shareholder, the access is limited to the board meeting, which is, happens once in three months, what is happening inside of it, so these are the protection areas which investor is always looking at and that has nothing major has happened into that. Now, top of it, now uh, we see uh, that uh, US and China are the major investment partner to India. Now, what exactly has happened uh, post-COVID in, uh, I think probably in last year, May 2020, uh, government has brought in a resolution wherein uh, any investment directly or indirectly yeah. through a Chinese uh, require a uh, approval, you know, even if you're is an automatic way, but that is not an automatic, it was a Chinese fund. So that really, you know, put a break to the investor, you know, investor or a good valued business to work on. Then top of it, what I really see as a challenge from the, from the uh, founder's perspective, you know, that is one is the investor perspective and a global. What is another uh, perspective is that from the founder is the preparation of their story and their journey. Right. What exactly when to, what problem, solution, or product they are uh, going to offer. There's no very great, uh, you know, um, I will say clarity on that. Then, uh, how they are uh, uh, how they are managing the financials right now because they start other business and the day one they will not seek the funding they will run it for one year or something they have to be very clear they will say I have contributed but that is not a solution the point that how they are uh, uh, getting into this then one thing at uh, another another major issue what I see is a 
conversation you know uh, what they talk what they uh, propose to do there is a uh, gap in between so these are the perspective in a very high level i can talk about from the from the investor perspective from the founder perspective which okay. enables the process of vc in india as of now the process this is my opinion thank you so these are the reasons you feel there is a sometimes a disconnect or a gap yeah. uh, between the fund seeking and the venture capitalist sources which are there right but that quite exciting inputs now taking it from here uh, let's hear from mr goel mr goel playing sometimes both the roles as a investor into projects at the same time as a top entrepreneur mr goel i'm sure that you have been interacting with various fund houses and getting new projects of the line which is there so in your experience of last couple of years of the current projects what do you feel could be the challenges for a young, I, i have owned service young startup but any kind of startup venture to attract attention from a vc please mr goel uh, so the probably the uh, the uh, legal environment uh, sanjeev and uh, probably uh, rajiv or uh, you will be the better person uh, from the perspective of a venture capitalist uh, i would like to speak on uh, the side of the entrepreneurs uh, part uh, uh, what happens like if we talk about the college admissions now we know the top rank colleges will look for a percentage which will be close to like in delhi i'm taking example 98 right. 99% right uh, and if somebody is scoring 60 70 80 85 90 95 even for sure he is not going to get uh, enrolled in those top rank colleges right now, that's what uh, the problem is that uh, despite uh, preparation only a couple of thousand uh, students yes. get to that level of 99% and above now same ha- same thing happens with the entrepreneur where uh, uh, despite uh, they have everything in mind and they plan passionately uh, but they do not plan the end outcome which uh, stephen covey says one of the habits uh, start with end in mind so that generally uh, generally uh, does not happen with the entrepreneurs and uh, most of the time when first generation entrepreneurs they they cannot really see what will happen down the line 6 months or 12 months or 18 months they do not plan that in case if investment does not come then what will happen they do not plan that uh, let, let's say we the milestone they don't define clearly then they don't have uh, adequate resources so from the end of it uh, we must know that if uh, you have to go close to the vc and get funded so probably you have to walk you have to walk to a level your own and once it happens then probably yes uh, you get into that uh, pool where investors are sitting and waiting for you and they probably might welcome but before that uh, the working uh, you see uh, over a period of last uh, 10 years uh, what has happened uh, it has become a flimsy background a uh, lot of stories lot of uh, young entrepreneur stories have attracted people like uh, if we talk about 80s 90s people used to uh, wear clothes uh, worn by the celebrities in the movies so same thing is happening with the new uh, generation they are uh, very much attracted to it and they feel that uh, the idea will bring a lot of money and will be valued at a different level but actually uh, going to that level is a tough journey uh, one of our project you know that uh, despite uh, we are in part of that but yes we have waited for almost one year now and now we have got into the stage where uh, funding is about to happen in our project so you have to really wait and make it arrive at a point where it is uh, uh, become sellable to the investor uh yeah whatever uh, is typically not only the concept but the fact is i have to have a long term plan that is what mr goel i heard you say yeah and the vision has to be very very specific in terms of putting in a hard work which has to be seen by the investor which i am going in for it it cannot be just a concept which i have in my mind i do a paperwork and expect my vcs to come across right 
Yeah, that's right. But uh, but top of that, when we talk about college students or maybe the young entrepreneur, first time, uh, like somebody is working with the corporate and had a great idea, great experience. For them to visualize everything on paper is uh, in the mind and uh, uh, pan it down to the paper, uh, make it happen. That becomes very easy because they have seen uh, in the corporate uh, world uh, very clearly. But when it comes to the uh, young uh, team, they actually don't uh, know the nitty gritties of the entire ecosystem. They are excited. They have a lot of energy, passion, enthusiasm, everything they have. But right. The experience. Got your point. Uh, Rajiv, would you like to bring in your thoughts at this stage? Yeah, thank you, Sandeep. I think I am, uh, you know, uh, this is a question to the whole forum. Uh, what I understand is that as an investor, uh, there Can are, you have your video on? Or? Uh, no, I think it's okay. Okay, yeah. fine. Yeah. Uh, so, so uh, from my perspective, what I want to understand is that from an investor perspective, there are three things which I believe are very important. And those three are three R's. And first R is return. So what is the kind of return percentage the venture is going to give? And that has to match with the aspiration of the investor. And there has to be mapping with the investor and investee both. Second is what is the kind of risk profiling is there? Okay, what kind of risk the uh, investor is putting into this particular venture? Yes. And third, the most important thing is realization. So when the money will be realized, when, so is it, is it the investor is in short-term player or a long-term player or an, you know, super long-term player. So these are the three fundamental things on which an investor actually take a call to, you know, uh, uh, do an investment or not to do an investment in any venture. So I would like to understand from this forum that how these three, three are critical uh, for getting investments. And second is that how we can do our level best to get our, get it funded. Wonderful. Uh, and thanks for sharing your uh, thoughts as well as your queries. Uh, well, coming back uh, to Sanjeev with your queries, I just put in a small, I won't say twist, a uh, bit of Sanjeev, uh, when Rajiv raised uh, the last two points, okay, which he said ki he wanted to understand from the panel. Am I right in saying that if there are 20 VCs available in the market, venture capitalist, each of them, they have funds, but they may have different mandates. Okay. Does it also happen? I'm just adding my question over on top of it, that I might be approaching seven of these VCs who may not have a focus or a mandate in the area of my project. Okay, and that may also make me frustrated going from one VC to another VC because a VC will never say outright, okay, this is not my area of focus or my scope or my mandate as such. Sanjeev, your take, please. <coughs> this is over about... and above to what Rajiv wanted to know. Yeah, so I just talk about from the investor, from the founder's point of view, uh, the the conduct extensive research you know okay so so what is, what is the very basic of any because you are you are procuring a partner for your business mm -hmm. please understand that he is not coming as a as a money supply to the business he is coming as a partner to the to the entire business first and foremost thing so there should be an extensive um, you know research your product your service your solution to be to the core Third is definitely how you are managing your finances. Now, just to give you one quote of 2020. Now, we all see in 2020, there was hardly any VC funding and all these things. But in the midst of uh, uh, in all this, your Reliance Geo has raised a huge money, you know, close to $18, 20000000000 billion. Now, the people will say that Reliance or money can raise uh, this kind of funding. But if you go inside of it, if you if you are really uh, see from the business perspective, they right. are they are the one of the companies who has brought down the internet cost to the ninety three percent down first. They have uh, they are part of the country who are the number of most number of users. Third, 
their platform or their uh, solution is much better than many of the advanced countries of the world who are okay. now these are the driving force yes there is a name of ambani or something like that but what solution they provided that is important i will not going to put the money just seeing mukesh ambani's name what he is doing he has 10 such businesses does all the businesses has raised the money no because he has given a solution uh, to the in, to the entire uh, world that i brought the cost to this level and i have shown for that reason the valuation has gone up now that will talk about the the return and the aspiration now suppose somebody from facebook facebook why facebook will come and invest in reliance geo because of long term association they want to enter to that space so when you are looking into enter to the space definitely you know the aspiration is to enter then the return goes take a back seat same is a risk profiling they know right. that this this business has a huge potential in this country i'm not talking about any any country in india where when 130 135 billion people are there and today some 70 80% are on the net on the wifi or whatever we can talk about realization now realization or or what is uh, the entire this is completely depend on the investor per se you know the 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 risk profile will always give you a return now earlier what we have seen that even for 3 years the irrs are huge they are getting you know three four times return and they are gone you know but this is not applicable for all industry you know for education or tech industry this kind because it's 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 grow in an inorganic way if if your platform has the capability then you will going to achieve those number so that is a reason when your product give you a better solution then is a is a long term player and <coughs> your, and 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 your research will talk about that i am going to this technology will going to touch base say uh, 60 billion people you know like that <coughs> so maybe you start with a a uh, hundred thousand people but in gradually in four years five years where you able to demonstrate based on your research you know and if everything goes well so this is a particular reason that what i see from the reliance this thing that it's not about name it's not about what exactly you have worked on that that matters you know and then is is all your game then that is what my uh submission to this fine no that puts a clear perspective to that uh mr goel staying with the same uh question uh which i put across to sanjee in terms that our funds having each having different directions different focus i'm sure they have or the different mandates at the same time what rajiv wanted to understand from the forum uh as a person who has seen it as an entrepreneur and also mentoring new tech startup what are your thoughts and suggestions at this stage please uh, sandeep uh, like uh, there was a small uh, clip i had uh, two days before where okay. it was written that india has 60 unicorns now mm-hmm. 21 of them have reached the status in last few months now right. uh, if we look uh, back probably 30 40 years back becoming a unicorn uh, now uh, when we say unicorn it's not a revenue generation it is wealth or the valuation of the company now the uh, the returns are not perceived as how much sales a company is doing how much profit they are generating uh, the valuation game has changed entirely in a different uh, perspective so today uh, the investor probably is not looking at your revenue sheet or balance sheet in terms of uh, how much revenue is coming how much profit you have and whether you will be able to uh, give me 20% return on month on month basis or year on year basis now it is uh, uh, purely the uh, valuation perspective so that is one so returns are definitely going into different directions uh, risk uh, definitely uh, is something what uh, investor looks at is like mm-hmm. uh, when somebody uh, as an individual invest in ipo or maybe in the share in open market 
So yes, they study their balance sheet. Some of them goes with the graph. Some of them goes with the expert opinion. Some some of them yeah own uh, research. So the risk analysis of the entrepreneur, if we, they uh, like probably has done good research, so then definitely he can probably justify the investor very easily. And but most of the cases, the uh, it is passion which is uh, driving the entrepreneurship, not the uh, solid foundation. So yes, uh, there is a mismatch in that. Uh, that's why uh, rejections do happen. And uh, third, uh, realization. Uh, again, I uh, go back to that. Uh, uh, the revenue part of it, the realization is basically seen uh, again in a different perspective. Exit. Now it is more like uh, when I'll be able to exit at what price. So exit sure. policy is predefined. Uh, that happens through when a new investor comes in or maybe you go uh, via IPO route or maybe uh, you exit completely. What, whatever I mean, different ways and means are there, probably Sanjeev is good in that. Uh, because I don't uh, want to interfere in the technical yeah. uh, uh, comments. Uh, so keeping that in mind, uh, now it is like uh, when the valuation comes in, like if you take an example of Flipkart or maybe another uh, couple of uh, unicorns, Solo, I mean, they have not invested. They they don't own the cabs. Uh, Flipkart does not uh, produce anything. Yeah. So it is like, you see, the concept is different. How, uh, how you can reach to the masses. Now, if we go back uh, way back in 1984, uh, like probably the Maruti came in, uh, just imagine that if Citibank would not have extended the credit facility, uh, going so far, probably selling those number of cars would not have been possible. Now, today, if you compare Mark or uh, Maruti, now it is like Mark uh, a niche product and Maruti is for masses. So that makes it the whole story for a valuation game. If you are scalable, if you have something which can reach to the hands of each and every individual. Like if we talk about uh, what Sanjeev said about Reliance, I remember, uh, I think it is uh, uh, yeah. uh, 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 10, 10, 12 years back when Reliance uh, was an uh, Reliance announced Pansur Pe Mansun Dhamaka. So it is something like uh, the mobile uh, reached to the uh, last song of the ladder. I mean, people who are uh, laborers, even they are using the uh, mobile phones now. That is again because of uh, reliance. Uh, otherwise, we had uh, premium, uh, like the premiumness was there with the mobile handset and the mobile uses. I remember way back in 90, I think four or five when it was launched. So we used to have 32 rupees per minute, outgoing 16 rupees per minute incoming. So it was a niche product. So reliance made it a product for masses. So as long as you have a niche segment, your uh, Outcomes will be different as long as uh, you say that I'm uh, scalable and uh, anybody and everybody can become my customer. Your perspective gets changed uh, drastically. And it's more about valuation. Uh, what I feel now is not about the revenue. It's uh, what kind of traction you have, what kind of customer base you have. And where they believe that profit will come by default if a customer is using your services, uh, sooner or later profit will come. Right. So... The, you you give an uh, apt example. In fact, uh, risk profiling also shifts right. and changes a lot compared to it's not about only the revenue part of it. And things are changing very, very fast. And I think it, it is equally dynamic uh, scenario, Sanjeev, for the investors too in the current world. Uh, Rajiv, I believe... Uh, with the explanation of Sanjeev and Mr. Goel, you got some clarity. Yeah, yeah absolutely clarity. Thank you very much. I have a very, very burning uh, question, if I may ask you. Please. Yeah, so uh, Mr. Goel has touched based on a very critical uh, point, which is valuation. So I would like to understand from this forum that how an valuation is, uh, what are the causes which actually makes the valuation high or low? Okay, and which actually is the definition that how much investment can come into the company. So my belief is that I, whatever uh, ventures I have seen in my life, uh, I have seen three aspects very, very important or the factors which are very important. One is the management profile. And second is the what kind of business model they are getting into. As Sanjeev was saying that, you know, when Jio has uh, proposed an you know, uh, uh, business model, it was so, so great, the, the telecom, that it actually uh, uh, captured the market like fire. 
And the third important thing, what is the opportunity size and how it is going to impact the whole world? So these are the few factors in my mind. I would like to understand from this forum that how an valuation is arrived at and what are the uh, real, uh, you know, uh, tangible things which an entrepreneur has to focus in to get their valuation as per their aspiration. True, it's an important question. And valuation is a pertinent, uh, I would say it's a paradigm. Obviously, Sanjeev may not agree with me, being a finance guy. Uh, Nestor Goel may, because see, uh, as you rightly put it, Sanjeev, uh, Rajiv, uh, valuation, how is the valuation arrived? And this is the same question we have also put across to Sanjeev a number of times, right, Sanjeev? And we try and work on uh, valuations. So before uh, I come to Sanjeev, I will go to Mr. Cohen and uh, take his thought about on the valuation perspective. For me, make it very, let, let me be very clear. As Mr. Goel have pointed it out, business, one is revenue. I have a very, very clear understanding of the last eight to 10 years. I have been interacting with various projects and VCs, my thought process are to, to a, a larger extent very clear. When a financer or a VC sits, the person knows exactly what he or she is going to go for. And the valuation is his or her perceptions because the person back and knows what he's going to invest and not invest. I'm very clear about that and that is how I take it up. So I say it's always a paradigm between the person whom I'm approaching as a VC and my project. Mr. Goel, please. That was my take. So I kept it short. You had a couple of experiences and you have made some success also in the last 10, 15 days to a larger extent. So what's the valuation? Because on the same project, we have undergone many valuations. Yes. Please. Uh, you see, uh, in the valuation game, I'll uh, answer differently. Beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder. So valuation is nothing but uh, how you have presented and how someone has perceived it. Now, when we go for, let's say, setting up a steel plant, so there is everything uh, written on the paper, the cost, uh, the plant, machinery, investment, raw material, inventory on hold. Everything is all defined credit facilities. But when you talk about a concept, now you have to say that I'll be, let's say I'm taking a virtual new uh, cab aggregator. Probably when he'll come and say that, okay, Ola does not have this thing. Uber does not have this thing. I'll be having this thing in my platform. And probably I'll start with 10 cabs and probably will make uh, one lakh cabs available in the next six months. Now you see, there is nothing in it. Practically, if you look at, you do not have anything to show practically the way uh, the uh, financial institutions used to see things that vendor ka aapko quotation lagana hai. You have to really bring it, uh, the, you have to show the paper of the land. Here uh, in the current uh, era, uh, those uh, things have gone. Here you have to talk about uh, your ideas. You have to really make them uh, visible virtually. Physically, you really cannot prove that I'll have one lakh cabs. Uh, in my app registered in next six months or one year down the line. You cannot do that. You cannot have agreement with uh, one lakh taxi drivers uh, to prove your concept. So proof of concept is uh, probably is, uh, only limited to uh, that idea uh, at the ideation stage where things have not materialized. Uh, you can show that yes, practically it is possible. That is one. Right. Uh, the valuation again, uh, let's say we say uh, that 10,000 taxi drivers have come to you. Now, if those people have come to you already, then your valuation will be more based on what revenue you have generated out of 10,000 cabs. But in the beginning, it is all uh, virtual. It is all perception. So valuation will change. Uh, the more you get into it, the more uh, uh, probably you have uh, uh, viability of the product, which is uh, running and uh, doing some traction, doing some transaction. So then valuation will be based on what you have achieved in what period of time. Initially, sure. it, initially it is all uh, that uh, someone uh, sees the gold statue in the sky and someone doesn't. So it is uh, all uh, visualization power of the investor and the entrepreneur. True. 
That's all very true. I do agree. It's in the eyes of the beholder. Typically, a investor knows by and large. I'm putting my best onto it. What he or she is going to do with that investment when they are putting their investment into that venture? Right. Very clearly. Uh, I'm sure Sanjeev might agree or may not agree with that. <laughs> on that, because valuation has its own calculations, which is there. So keeping it alive. Sanjeev, uh, being an expert, you have been in and out day in, day out. Because uh, uh, this week also, when I was in Hyderabad, you remember we were talking about uh, certain things which was there, and it's very similar. Mr. Goel had shared with you a large asset, a five-star assets, which was there. So, how do we arrive at valuation? Very clearly, yes, Mr. Goel, please. Before Sanjeev starts, I just want to add uh, another line so that uh, he can make it uh, more clear technically. Hmm. Uh, you see, uh, today, uh, if we uh, talk about an infrastructure-based project, uh, probably he might have invested 50 crore or 100 crore, and it may not be running that well. His valuation will be not even 30% uh, of the total investments he has done. Yes. And there may be a small app which is running for last six months and doing nothing as only visitors. And that might be valued more than the 100 crore rupees infrastructure. Yeah. You see, it is a altogether a different ball game. Very so different. Please, Sanjeev, uh, do address this query as well that somebody who has invested 100 crore, not able to generate even 30 crore out of it, and a person who has just invested 10, 20 lakh rupees and some uh, traction is there. He's uh, showing his uh, uh, probably the valuation to 50 or 100 crores. Right. So, Sanjeev, you have three of us on to you, please. <laughs> so, so, I always see the business from three major areas one is the survival, sustainability, and the scalability. We can talk about three years, five years, horizon, and a lot of things. So my calculation is very simple, you know. So uh, being a finance man, I will try to see my financial figures that on what, what are my parameters, what are my assumptions, and what are my market, and what is my growth of my market, and derive a number in in terms of uh, in terms of the 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 scalability of the business in five years. Now, typically, how I how I do uh, evaluation and some of my counterparts in the Middle East uh, who are also from the fraternity, they also talk over the same language where we are seeing the business for five years. Where first one to two years goes for the survival, another year or so okay. into the sustainability, and third year is where you can see the scalability, where you see that the business is growing at a very high rate. Now, what is the parameter for the business, uh, uh, you know, valuation? One is uh, definitely today the, the world is talking about the data, the how much data you have been created out of your whatever the activity you do. Secondly, with this data and with this your business idea, how much end result, that is profit you are generating out of the business. Okay. So uh, if I talk about my, it's very simple that, and I've been... Uh, uh, being vetted by many other people that probably, uh, you know, depending upon industry to industry, your fifth year profit into four times or three times, depending upon your valuation. Simple for me. Fine. I don't go into any intricacies of whatever because five years is a time where I have survived, where I have uh, sustained and I have able to scale it to a different level. So, I take the fifth year as my uh, scalable. I just, I just take that figure uh, uh, as my bottom line, whatever, and try to multiply a multiplier to get a valuation of this. That's a simple formula. Thank you. The yeah, true. I think, I think Sanjeev, uh, I'll just take this point. Uh -huh. uh, Ninety percent of the tech-based platforms I mean they their valuation does not fit into uh, fit into this parameter because by the time they are into fifth year. They either have become unicorns or they have gone uh, bankrupt. Yeah, three years for them, maybe. Probably. Even for three years, I mean, their uh, valuation never matches to their uh, revenue figures. Yeah. 
mean, most of the uh, big uh, uh, tech platforms, uh, they are still burning money. They are burning cash. Yeah, yeah. They are not in profits. So, so there the play will definitely come on the kind of customer acquisition that you have, because when you are doing activity now, suppose you are taking a case of a flip card, it is still in the losses. How can you do the valuation on that basis? You, you can't. can't. So that's definitely what I'm talking about. The how much data you've been creating, so that it can value the business on that basis. You know, I was doing a just to give you one uh, example, the current funding that I'm try to do for a business through my partner. Uh, this is again a VC funding for a uh, aircraft business. It's a regional aircraft business, and they require close to four hundred sixty-five million dollar. Means I'm talking about three three thousand five hundred. Now, when I was talking to the people, now airline business is making uh, one and a half to three percent as the GOP gross operating profit. I'm not talking about the the net profit uh, and all this thing. So now, with this kind of a, you can't raise a fund. Now, this has been handled. Uh, this venture capital is himself with the Indian charter fund. I was having a call two three days back. Now he talked about. The data-driven eight verticals, which will give a huge valuation to the business. Now, uh, as the inter, uh, as the business owner, he kept this information with it. This, when as a business consultant, I asked him that it doesn't make any sense how you can raise and when you are at GOP level of one one and a half or two percent or three percent, how you can talk about this kind of a funding? Then he talks about the data-driven. Operations and the, how the data has been created, how the vertical are going to give you the business, which is a major chunk of the revenue which they were going to raise. The point is this: that you just, I, what I told, talk in the beginning. One is very simple: what is your uh, business capability in terms of number you can show, but everything cannot be trans uh, uh, translated into numbers all the time. Now, when I was talking to these people, then I told him that the investment will not come in the airlines level, but it has to come in the holding companies level. You know, in the, in the top of it, because then only you can take the leverage of this data which you've created in the aircraft, and they have agreed to that point. Now, so a point that as an investor, you need to understand that where is the uh, your your money is keeping coming. Now, yeah, apart from the money is coming. That is because he tried to kept at an SPV, different SPV for this and that, and try to complicate the entire situation. But when he talked about that, it has to be in the holding company where you have to have the holding company and stuff like that, and get to know a lot of things that how the margin are created. So airlines uh, procurement company will also part of it. So the structure need to be created for the VCs. To invest. So, what is the role of a consultant? But I understand one is that number. Definitely, we are good at number. But today, right. as a consultant, is more than a number. Is to understand the business process in totality. Where from the money is coming? Where? How much money is generating? As a holistic way, not just as a piece of balance sheet or a profit and loss. This is never a parameter. But Yes, yes, definitely for a manufacturing organization or something who are, because today, what are the, we need to understand where the, typically the VCs, this is from the, the ENY report. That sure. I'm they are talking about the consumer durable. They are talking about the agriculture. They are talking about um, uh, um, uh, pharma. They are talking about food processing. They are talking about chemical. These are the five, six, and edutech is definitely there. So, if you see out of the six topmost, five are manufacturing based or an asset based. So, the, so, so keeping this is how. the discussion from uh, I want sorry for interrupting Sanjeev. So, basically, the query which Rajiv raised, and from the discussion which we just had in the last four or five minutes, uh, Rajiv also put in a point. It depends on the management profile. Okay, yeah. so if you look into it from the very beginning, uh, when we talked about this topic as a challenge of VC funding when we started off, and as a discussion evolved in the last 50 55 minutes, uh, which was there, I think it's aptly clear 
the detailed discussion as we are getting into it, valuation in itself is not an easy subject for anybody. No way. Similarly, this is where the challenge lies. Right, Raji? Now, like an organization put their bet on a highly or active newly recruited CEO with a good profile, it is not a bet that the management profile can make things always happen. But that is again an expectation and a perceived valuation which goes behind that new idea or a new concept. And Mr. Goyal, as you rightly shared, there are a lot of companies which has been valued very highly, but still on net profits, they're still lagging, lagging behind, they're trying to come across. And when we, Sanjeev, as you brought in assets, uh, certain valuations are much visible when I'm transferring assets in terms of depreciation, physical assets, what would be the value currently or proportionally. Okay. I'm coming back to before we conclude to two conclusions, picking up from what Mr. Goel said. Investor knows what to do with the thing. It's in the eye of the beholder. Okay. The valuation lies. Like I have a plant. I, as a manufacturer, can look at the plant to make use of it and roll out products. I, as a person who is an influential scrap dealer, can look at the plant in a different way with a bargain price and can make millions out of that, depending on how I'm looking at those scenarios. Similarly, the profiles as it goes across. Now, we are ending at a very, very challenging scenario. To close it at this uh, level, I would say, uh, Sanjeev and Mr. Goel, okay, let me come to Sanjeev first. What are the top two or three challenges which a person should be ready for when they're going for VC fund? Uh, two, three points from the discussion. So, uh, if I'm looking from, uh, from the VC perspective, one, he has to be very, very clear about his product. Okay. First is the team. One is product solution that he is bringing to the to the entire uh, you know uh, value chain. Then I will definitely want to see that uh, how he has prepared all these years. One is the concept stage and all this thing. What how he has prepared, and third, most important, what he is uh, communicating, because many a time there has been a, a, a gap between the top and the lips. So that transfer, when, when you're bringing a partner, you should not be any difference when you are uh, seeing okay. at, a, at that level that you are bringing complete transparency. Right. You want. So for me, these are the very important three aspects. What is a product solution you're bringing and what is your journey and the data and how you have created third is your, uh, you know, what you are talking dialogue. Thank you. Great. So these are your three suggestions which are there. Uh, Mr. Goel, what would you say would be the challenges which a person should be ready with to face? When uh, you see, for both uh, sides, I just want to quote one example. Like when we watch any uh, Hollywood or Bollywood movie, the bullets of the gun are always uh, there with the hero, as long as the uh, producer or the director doesn't want him to die. Uh, you are not in the movie. VC has access to fund, uh, which is again limited, and he has obligation to uh, generate uh, returns, as well as on the entrepreneur side, uh, the bullets right. are defined. Bullets are defined. Bullets, I'm counting every bullet as a resource. <clears throat> so one has to be clear in mind that it is not a movie which you can replay. Once your resources are utilized, you'll be over. Same way on the side of VC, same on the side of entrepreneurship. So the, uh, the biggest challenge is that one must see what he has and how it can be best utilized. And there has to be some fallback plan, what you call uh, plan B, in case if this does not happen, then what? I have seen a couple of uh, real examples I have. People have come out from very high paying jobs. They started something 
and uh, they spent or I must say invested or wasted uh, two, three years and then they gone back to the corporate world. Okay. The growth, they have missed the bus and they have started from not from the level they left. Right. Uh, much below that and uh, their peer group has gone to different level. So you see, until as you define your uh, resources, you understand them properly, jumping into something which you do not know, because there is an excitement of darkness. I'm writing a, a text on this title, Excitement of Darkness. Uh, so uh, the entrepreneurship is something like that, where you enter into a room which is fully dark, you do not know what is where, and you just jumped into it and uh, you feel that I'll be able to come out uh, in a very good way. So not always happens. Uh, so one has to see what is there, how long he can sustain, and if something fails, what next? So 90% of the people, they don't plan what next. Fine. Uh, Rajiv, I'm sure you heard uh, both Sanjeev and Mr. Goel's perspective on a query on the valuation, right? Yes, yes, yes. So that gives some directions very clearly. Yeah. And to conclude, I would say, obviously, what has come across in the panel is, as an uh, entrepreneur, as Sanjeev and Mr. Goel put it, and Rajiv, you have also added your uh, thoughts and your experience to that. So one is, there is no substitute to uh, entrepreneurs believe in the product, focus on the product, a long time uh, vision, plan, understanding of the ground realities in the market. There's no substitute to that. Second, obviously, as experts have right now mentioned out, you have to wear it out. And as Ajit has added, obviously it helps when you have a dependable management at the top on which the investors can be comfortable putting their money behind, which looks as understanding the market to see the financial figures and the business figures will put in. And obviously third is the market which I'm venturing into. It's obviously the potential which people today sitting on the drawing table are making about the future. So like you take a risk, the investors also comes to take a risk. It's about both the parties getting into a synchronized environment. And as I have been always believing, the investor already has a clarity where to invest, what to invest, what is the backline which they have already invested into where they can align. And the next story happens. Right, Sanjeev? Yeah. So with that, let's conclude over here. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thanks, Sanjeev, for joining us. Thank you. For being a part of it. Thank you, Mr. Goel. Hopefully, we'll connect with another exciting topic in the coming weeks. There's lots happening on the investment side now. Thank you. Thank See you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very Thank much. you, everyone. Thank you, Thank Sanjeev. You. Thank you, Sanjeev. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.